Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good middle of the night, wherever you are. Uh, welcome back to Hyperledger Global Forum 2021. Uh, third, this is the third day. I uh, hope you've been able to enjoy much of the terrific content here. I, I get to meet other people. A lot of fun stuff has been happening these last few days, and I'm so excited to introduce uh, and host this this final round of keynote conversations and presentations. Um, as as usual, and once again, thank you to Accenture and IBM as Diamond sponsors of the event. Thank you as well to the Falcoin Foundation, Hitachi, Siemens, and Zulig Pharmaceutical for their, their generous sponsorship, uh, which has made helped make all of this possible uh, for us to bring to all of you. Uh, also, uh, of course, wanted to uh, reinforce uh, we are governed here by a code of conduct. So uh, uh, please read this, get to understand it. And we really want to make sure that at events like these, whether they're real or virtual, all feel truly welcome here in the Hyperledger community. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, many of you have had a chance to enjoy the uh, hallway track uh, that we've hosted in Gathertown. A bunch of us gathered there yesterday after the uh, sessions were over and hung out and even played a competitive game of Tetris. Uh, that was pretty hysterically fun. So I, I do get a chance to check it out. We'll keep it open a little bit after this uh, last round of sessions is done for today. Um, uh, I do want to express sincere thanks to the uh, program committee, uh, a group of over 20 different or uh, individuals from the, drawn from all parts of the Hyperledger community who really helped us put together an amazing forum for all of you. This is community built, community stewarded, uh, and really I think reflects the, the incredible range of, of ideas and, and projects going on inside the Hyperledger ecosystem. We also, as you probably saw in the crawl at the beginning, um, uh, wanted to express sincere thanks as a staff to a particular set of individuals in the Hyperledger community who've really helped us glue everything together. Uh, Anita and, and Alexander, Grace Hartley, Bobby Muscara, Peter Samagyari, uh, and Renato Teixeira. Um, all of you have really helped us grow the international footprint and really connect far beyond the code to the broader community of, of Hyperledger. So thank you for that. Um, I, I wanted to open with a little Little bit of a framing, uh, not to drill too much into it, but uh, we really have gotten to better understand our community through uh, some deployment of statistics tools and others to understand the direction that projects head in and that sort of thing. And without diving into it too deeply, one thing that's come back to us pretty clearly is we really do need to figure out, as we've we've always tried to figure out, how do we work better together as a as a greenhouse? Uh, all of you have seen that graphic with all of our projects together living under one roof. Um, some of them intensely competitive with each other, right? Let's just be honest. Uh, uh, and uh, and sometimes figuring out how to go beyond our immediate, meeting our immediate needs on those projects can be a struggle. So to try to put this in perspective, some of you heard me mention on a, on a keynote conversation earlier this week, we raise chickens at my house. This is my daughter holding a chick uh, that's um, a couple of months old. She has gone on to be a hen laying, uh, uh, I'm sorry, an egg laying hen, uh, producing a couple of eggs a day for us, actually. Um, and so I read this passage recently in a new Letter from O'Reilly uh, that caused me to make a connection here. I just really wanted to share with you. And the, and the headline was, is there such a thing as too much competition? And without going into the details, there was this uh, uh, famous chicken breeding experiment uh, that where they tried to see how do we increase the amount of eggs that hens uh, can produce in a big, you know, uh, 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 factory farming kind of situation. And so they put all the hens who produce the most eggs together and tried to breed them together as you might, uh, and discovered that actually, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a great thing they were producing hens that that saw higher aggression lower egg production fewer chickens overall due to hyper aggressive hens by contrast when they took when they focused their breeding on the most productive groups of chickens because uh, chickens tend to form flocks as you might imagine um, uh, and bred those for productivity as a group they saw uh, a 160% increase in productivity. Uh, they realized that there was a role that even those chickens who weren't laying eggs uh, played in helping uh, foster that development. We even see this ourselves in our own uh, uh, chicken, our own hen house where we see uh, uh, chickens kind of taking turns on the eggs, uh, keeping them warm, uh, all that kind of stuff. So the conclusion from all of this was that I, I, uh, selfish individuals outcompete altruistic individuals, right? But 
altruistic groups outcompete selfish groups. This is an observation based on this and other work that evolutionary biologist David Sloan Wilson arrived at. Um, and this is a really key insight that I think applies not just to chickens, but applies to open source projects, particularly those like Hyperledger, but also like the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, Apache Software Foundation, and others that within one community, we sometimes can get competitive. We sometimes you know, have different approaches to solving the same problem uh, and, and figuring out how to help each project be successful, but still work together is, is super hard to do rather than just viciously competing. Um, I do want to give one quick example of where I think this is working well. Some folks here might have been on the session yesterday uh, uh, talking about the different interoperability initiatives at Hyperledger, both the project Hyperledger Cactus, as well as the, the two things in labs, uh, Weaver and Yui. Bringing these projects together, especially so early in their effort, has been really important. They all come at it from different angles with a different idea of what uh, the priorities are. I, I, UE, for example, implements something called the IBC, Interblockchain Communications Protocol. Um, but uh, this early on, it's it's still early enough for each of them to think altruistically about what might they do beyond meeting their own immediate needs uh, to be able to co combine their efforts. And this is something we should be thinking more about across the rest of Hyperledger. Uh, when we're building these things, we're, it will pay off to, to think, how do I find other people with a similar problem to my own, I, I help them meet their needs by looking for opportunities for us to collaborate. And so I'm really happy to see that happen and really wanna make sure as a community, we never take the development of open source as a community, not just as code for granted, that we recognize this is hard work uh, and, and there's a bit of sacrifice required to make that happen. Um, but at the end of the day, if we're altruistic, not just as individuals, but as a group, then we'll get to something really better. Um, and this was just a whole series of observations led me to go, I've got to talk about this in, well, in front of the audience. And I'm really happy uh, uh, to see so much of this happening inside the Hyperledger ecosystem. So we had some amazing uh, keynotes uh, during the segment one for today. I won't repeat it, but they're up on YouTube already. Uh, one on fighting fraud and error in the vaccine supply chain, which is going to be a huge deal this year. Um, uh, another talking about all sorts of applications for Hyperledger's technologies in in, uh, in, in, the, in the telecom sector, in uh, uh, some major banking environments where a trillion uh, dollars worth, a trillion renminbi have been transferred over a blockchain based network in the last year. Last, uh, uh, yeah, in the last year. So amazing stuff to hear. But today we've got an amazing set of uh, keynote panels on their way. Uh, one by Jonathan Doden. I'll introduce him just before he comes on, uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, the fight against misinformation. A fireside chat between Marta Belcher of the Filecoin Foundation and Mike Dolan from the Linux Foundation about this moment in time uh, where we are with the adoption of blockchain technology. Uh, and a closing panel, which I'm really excited about on how NFTs are changing the music and media landscape. Uh, uh, and we'll introduce all of them uh, as we get there. Um, uh, but don't forget the hallway track. Don't forget the networking features and hop in. Be sure and claim your $25 Kiva credit as the, as the attendee gift. And finally, consider coming tomorrow to the Firefly at Hyperledger Day. Um, links to all of the above are in Hoppen. And with this, I really want to uh, transition now to Jonathan Doton.